Hello everyone, BBTube101 back with another video on the 1996 tube stock for the Jubilee line. Today in this video we're going to be looking at a few driving tips which can help you to correctly drive the train. This video will cover how to get the train moving after you've closed the doors and are ready to depart. Next we'll look at stopping the train at the station in the correct stopping area and demonstrate the correct side door enable feature. And last of all, we'll look at what will happen if we were to pass the signal at danger showing red aspect and a step-by-step -step procedure to recover following the spread. If you need any help with the complete setting up of the train, please take a look at the other tutorial linked in the description as this is covered in greater depth. I hope you enjoy and let's jump in and get started. Okay, so the uh, train is set and configured, ready to go. So what I'm doing now is I'm setting the controls to my preferred configuration, which is the stationary configuration uh, to get the train moving once the doors are closed. So as you can see, I've uh, set the power notch and the reverser to FB3. Um, and this should be the configuration or the stationary configuration you're in whenever you're stopped at a stop so that you can uh, get the train started and move again. Just about 30 seconds to departure. Um, you can ignore that. I think something happened where I've, I uh, activated, and uh, all I'm doing is I'm pressing space bar to release the handle. So you can ignore that. Um, so the signal's just turning green now. I'm going to make an announcement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press uh, 4 on the keyboard. Right there. Press 3, make an announcement. This train's ready to depart. Stand clear, mind the doors, please. And base that. Press 4 again to uh, put back up the handset. Or PA system. Pressing F5 to close the doors. And then all I'm going to do is press space bar. And press Z. And keep pressing it until at least the train is starting to move. Okay, so next on to stopping the train at the stop point. I've paused here and you can see we're coming into West Ham station. I recommend to enter the station at no faster than 35, uh, 30 miles per hour, sorry. You could do it at 35, but uh, to say any higher than that uh, would increase the chance of an overrun. And uh, this time I've decided not to show the on-screen keyboard as uh, there's quite a bit of uh, brake feathering uh, using keys Q&A on the keyboard. So, um, with that in mind, let's unpause and we'll uh, demonstrate uh, the uh, slowing down procedure, or at least how uh, I slow down the train and stop correctly at the stop point. Okay, so we're adding uh, light brakes now to slow the train down. Uh, generally, a feathering between brake notches 1 and 2 to keep a good braking curve so that I have enough speed in case I slow down too soon. Using notch 3 as an additional brake application if I'm I'm approaching the stop area too quickly. Approaching the stop area now and I'm feathering the brakes looking out the side window on the left. I want to be stopped between the arrows in the green area on the stop time just coming up. Just about to come to a halt now. I noticed the accurate stop indicator light shop to show that we're in the within the stopping area of the stop point. Consider the handle by pressing the space and open the doors on the right hand side. Change for District, Hammersmith and City, and North London Line. This train terminates at Waterloo. Okay, so demonstrating the correct side door enable feature, or the CSDE. If I was to try opening the doors on the left hand side, you notice so you can see that the doors will not open, which is exactly the result you would get if you were to do this in the real train. It and uh, also, if you are outside of the stop area, uh, not in between the station, let's just say, uh, you're not at the station, the doors will be disabled and you would have no way of opening them until you get to the next station uh, being within a stop area.
Alright, so second to last, we'll now demonstrate what will happen if we were to pass the signal light like danger or SPAD. In this first scenario, we have a plane coming into the platform at West Ham, aiming to stop at the other end. But what happens if we didn't stop and continue past the signal? You could, I could say, easily guess what the result. But for those that don't have an idea, basically the train's trip cock, that's uh, a mechanism on a train, gets tripped, and emergency brakes come on bringing the drain to a standing stop. So playing this scenario you can see we are slightly faster than the platform at West Ham station and I did this intentionally so that we can pass the signal just before it clears to green. So passing the signal Tango Uniform Alpha 101 showing a bad aspect at the end of the platform. The trip arm on the train stop has activated the trip cock. The emergency brakes apply bringing the train to a stop. We hear an alarm sound Notice the trip cock delay light flashing and also notice the alarm acknowledge button on the radio panel on our left also flashing. Stowing the handle and looking at the TMS to our right, uh, give me a second here, to see our issue and we can see a message, category B alarm, train from trip acknowledge. I've paused here briefly and this brings us on to the final part of the scenario. We're now going to recover from the recent spad we made at West Ham. So firstly, let's cancel this alarm by shutting down the train, pressing page up to move the mode control selector switch to the shutdown position. Next we will move the master key by pressing delete. And the next but most important is showing the train is fully shut down, team speed screen is blank, press the insert key and on pressing insert you will hear an audible relay click. Now we can switch back on the train pressing delete and page down. It is important, now important to note that you can only select the forward RM mode. As selecting the FSM PM mode you will hear that tone again. And also notice, uh, give me a second as I move to the left back onto the main drivers panel. Notice the trip clock delay light is no longer flashing but remains illuminated and also being in forward RM or in that mode the call on light flashes to notify other drivers or road users that the train is in distress. And the countdown of about 3 minutes has elapsed since the train has tripped and this is the time it will take for the delay to reset until we can drive normally again. For the meantime though, driving in forward RM we are restricted to 13 kilometers an hour. And if the train was to go faster than 14 kilometers an hour, an audible alarm would sound, as you can see here. And going any faster than 17 kilometers an hour, the motors would cut out, giving no more forward acceleration. Skipping ahead, it's been some time now, we've been driving for roughly two and a half minutes and notably, the trip clock delay light has extinguished, meaning that it has been three minutes and we can now drive normally again. So stopping the trip where it is, stay the handle, like so, and then press page down on the MCS to select FSM, full speed manual, PM. And now we can start driving as per normal, unrestricted. For this next scenario, which I was initially going to use but cannot do demonstrate due to problems which I've noted off to the developer and should hopefully be fixed in the next update, you can see we are outside of Canning Town Station. The speed limit here is 25 miles per hour and I've chosen this section as it is likely to catch players out being a potential SPAD area because this specific area approaching the platform at Canning Town Westbound checks that the train is doing no more than 25 miles per hour or less entering the platform. This is done by adding an approach control to signal Tango November 200, protecting the entrance to the platform. The time delay works by setting a trigger roughly around 50 to 60 meters from the signal in question, 
and when the train passes the trigger point the trigger starts a countdown timer to release the train stop as you can see when the timer gets to zero then signal tango november 200 will kill it to a less restrictive aspect allowing a train to pass without being tripped so from the driver's perspective here when we approach the signal from a distance it will be showing a red stop aspect as the train continues further forward closer to the signal while slowing down having passed the trigger point we notice that signal Tango November 200 is still red, but is also now showing a amber caution light simultaneously, which still indicates a stop aspect as the train stop hasn't yet released. If the train is doing 25 or less by the time we reach roughly 10 meters or so from the signal, the red stop light should extinguish, leaving the amber light on, indicating that the train stop has fully released and we can now safely pass the signal and proceed into the platform towards the stop point at the other end. For an extra bonus, I often get asked how to clear the TMS message after an audible tone sounds for reasons such as after a spad or if the visual, vigilance alarm were to sound. So what you would do if the dead man's alarm category A were to sound, you could do two of the following options. Either move the handle with the Q and Z keys to cancel the alarm, then press key 0 to clear the TMS message. Uh, also note the flashing alarm and acknowledge on the radio panel will extinguish once you press that uh, 0 key. Or if you are on the uh, in, or in the stationary configuration already, which is uh, FMBP as I demonstrated at the beginning of the video, then you can either move the handle with the Q and Z keys or you can press the spacebar two times to twist hold and release the uh, traction brake controller to cancel the alarm then press zero to clear the TMS message. So uh, let's quickly demonstrate. I have moved the controls. The primary configuration as you can see at the bottom left is currently a neutral emergency. It's been roughly 45 seconds so far since I've set it up the train. And uh, it's just about to come on in just a second. So you can hear the category A deadlines alarm. I'll cancel that by pressing the spacebar button twice to twist the and release the traction brake controller. Also notice the flashing alarm acknowledged on the radio panel flashing steadily. Moving to our right over to the TMS on the off side, we can see the dead man's alarm imminent car one acknowledge. Pressing zero on the keyboard will clear the message as you can see and the TMS main menu will now show. Also the alarm acknowledge on the radio panel will stop flashing. that's the end of this video i hope that these tips will be useful to you when driving the 1996 tube stock on the jubilee line and also i hope that you enjoyed this video if you have any further problems or questions relating to anything covered in this video do leave a comment below and i'll respond to them when i can that's all for me for now safe journey driver